Hello, my name is Candace, and I will be bringing your afternoon midday motivation. Um, the theme is God wants me to live with love. So the theme scripture is Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. And it reads, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. For this is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So the text for this inspiration begins with a Pharisee questioning Jesus. No doubt trying to trip him up like they always did. But even at the top of the chapter, if you read, you'll find the Sadducees questioning Jesus. And after they were silenced, that's when the Pharisees step up. And he decides to pose this question. And I'll be paraphrasing. Of all the commandments ever written in law, which is the greatest? Jesus replies, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. That is the first and greatest commandment. Then he goes on to say, and a second is like it. Almost to say, before you even ask, I'll give you the second. And that is, to love your neighbor as yourself. For on these two commandments depend all the laws and the prophets. He didn't say, thou shalt not kill. He didn't say, thou shalt not covet. He didn't even say to keep the Sabbath, even though we know all of those. But he answered that the greatest commandment was to love God with all of your heart. That's the seed of our emotion. With all of your soul, our immaterial essence, what makes us. And our mind or our intellect. The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. For every law and the writing of the prophets is founded on these two commandments. So we must first love God with every literal part of our existence and then love ourselves because it says to love your neighbor as yourself then love your neighbor so we'll start with love God God loves us with an everlasting love a pure love a tested and proven love his love for us is the template for how we should love no matter your love language God is that if your language is words of affirmation, the Bible is full of them. Not only did God do or provide the ultimate act of service by providing his son as the sacrifice for our redemption, but he also heals, he takes great care of us, he provides for us. And the world, the word tells us that daily God loads us with benefits, benefits such as grace and mercy, even when we don't deserve it, provision, protection, inspiration, for the blessings of the Lord make us rich and add to us no sorrow. No sorrow. So the blessings of the Lord and everything that he gives to us, that's receiving gifts. So if that's your love language, he has that covered. Not to mention the gift of gifts, the Holy Ghost, that enables us to spend quality time with him daily. With his act of service, he tore the veil and that gives us daily access to him. If we only seek him, we will find him. Through prayer, we can talk to him every day, all day. And if you quiet yourself in his presence during your quality time, you will hear him speak back to you and even feel his physical touch at times. There are times that you will literally feel him wrap his arms around you. And even if you take a literal look at the times and the things going on in your life, you'll see his hand in every area of your life. Again, so no matter your love language, God speaks it fluently, which makes it easy for us to love him. And because he loves us so deeply, we must love us deeply too, which moves me to my next point, love you. The scripture says, when I look at the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you take care of him? 
Even after making all of the beauty that you see around us, God stopped and thought that it wasn't perfect without you. When we read in the Bible, in Psalms, David says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and you know when I rise up. You discern my thoughts afar off. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. So I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance and in your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sum of them. That's David singing about how God knows literally every part of us inside and out, even the secret parts. He knows them all. He knows us, the real us. He knew that us before we even crossed over into time, but he still loves us. He loved us enough to make the ultimate sacrifice from the moment of, God, of man's fall, God was thinking of and providing our way of escape. Who am I that you are so mindful of us? Bishop Wagner would always talk about that that means his mind is literally full of us. So if you, or God, is great and perfect, and he is, and he thinks so much of us to provide the ultimate sacrifice, which was his son, and to daily provide the grace and mercy for us to commune with him, and you provide every need and every want, God, then we must stop and think and really grasp the fact that if he loves me in spite of me, everything I've done, everything I'm doing, everything I'll ever do, then I must love me too. Because him being perfect, knowing every member, everything I've ever done, but still thought I was worth it, then who am I to ever think that I wasn't worth it? Who am I to not love myself when he loves me with an everlasting love? It is basically a huge disservice and a slap in his face when he thinks we are worth it every day and he breathes into us and gifts us with another day. How can we love someone else if we first don't love us? It is impossible to give what we don't have. And the word commands us to love our neighbor as ourselves which moves us to the next point. Move. Love God's people. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, he cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that whoever loves God must also love his brother. We are all one flesh, one blood, and that makes, us family. Now while we may not always like our family, and we should definitely work on that, we still have the commandment to love one another, period. It is a commandment. So just like we know not to kill or to steal, we should know to love. We have to be better stewards over how we treat one another, how we talk to one another. The Bible says that a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So always let your words be seasoned with grace. If you see your brother or sister without, give out of yourself and do it out of love. Not for likes, not for clout, just love. And I know some of you might be thinking, well, my brother or my sister isn't nice or loving to me. The Bible says about that. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you 
so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise and fall on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So as long as you do all that is within your power to love your sister and brother, God will handle the rest for vengeance is his. He will repay and it will be better than anything you could have ever put together. Do your part and love without restraint. My dad would always tell us, if your enemy is hungry, give him some bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. Now we are human beings or we are not, I'm sorry, human beings having a human, a spiritual experience. But we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are not of this world, but we must be perfect because our Father is perfect. So if we being his sons and daughters come from him, and by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit, which makes us his sons and daughters, and God is love, then we too must be love. So, to tie it all in, how do I live with love? If we live daily with God, who is love, we will find it easier each day to be loved, or more godly, and essentially be loved. So we have come to know and to believe that the love that God has for us, which God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected in us. There's that perfection again. We have to be perfect. But only through God's love can we be perfect. God wants us to live with him, who is love, daily. And the more time we spend with him, who is love, then the more we will become like him. And we too will be loved. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And you shall know them by their fruit love God, love you, and love people.